Good morning, everyone. Um, I am Lato Mangorolo from South Africa. Um, today, I'll be sharing a story about my journey into knitwear design, how I designed a collection of Corsa inspired knitwear for Corsa initiates in the Eastern Cape. Um, I come from the Corsa um, culture, uh, specifically from the Mbondo clan. Um, I initiated the, 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 the project at the Nelson Mandela Metropolitan University in 2010. Uh, basically, um, my um, vision was to actually find a solution for these Corsa initiates um, to sort of change the way that they dress because it felt awkward for me when I was an, an, an initiate. Um, we had to dress in a way which didn't have any resemblance to the culture that we practice which of which is, uh, made me feel a bit awkward. So I'll be showing you later um, images of um, how Corsa initiates currently dress. Um, I was raised by a single mother um, who was very creative, uh, who had a good imagination. She was an entrepreneur. Um, at that time, when I was young, I didn't know, I, didn't, I had no idea what is an entrepreneur. I used to ask her, what is that? And she used to answer and say, give us definitions which were um, quite uh, different. Now I understand, now that I'm an entrepreneur, um, she was a very creative person. She taught us how to crochet, how to make beadwork, how to knit. Uh, my sister as well was here today. Um, she was taught by my, my late mother as well. And we ended up becoming her employee and uh, started making beadwork, crochet, uh, products that she sold at um, curio stores in South Africa. Um, my mother um, actually, uh, we, we, we grew up in a home, we, we, we didn't have a television set um, until this other time um, when we joined, me and my three other siblings joined high school and we decided to go hunting for a cheap television and I was in uh, 16 years old at the time um, because in high school we actually were left out uh, from other kids when, 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 when they spoke about uh, TV programs uh, because we couldn't relate to the subjects. So we, we told our mother about the issue and we decided to go to a second end store to buy t a television set. But uh, him, the whole idea changed when we got there um, once she noticed that there was a hand knitting machine uh, which was about uh, 20 times cheaper than the retail price. So that was the most disappointing day of my life <laughs> because we went back home with a hand knitting machine that I've never seen before in my life. Um, but it was quite fascinating to actually help her build it up um, because um, I, I'm a technical person and I love design as well. So I decided, okay, I'll give it a try and help her out. And uh, that was the my begin, beginning of my journey into knitwear design. Today I'll be sharing uh, sharing my inspiration, the concept behind my work, and uh, I'll show you a few pieces of the work that I'm doing, and I uh, will share uh, what how people relate to the work that I do, and uh, share a little bit of my vision of my knitwear brand. Corsa people are my main inspiration for my knitwear brand. Um, as you may all might know, um, Corsa people are majorly um, settled in the, in the Eastern Cape. Uh, they originally, um, most of the population of the Corsa people are in the Transkei. Uh, they are the second biggest population in South, South Africa after the Zulu people, and there's about eight million um, Corsa people in South Africa. Um, I, I live in Port Elizabeth, which is on the lower tip of South Africa. Uh, it's quite a small, it's the smallest city of uh, South Africa, and um, it has quite amazing inspiration that people underlook, which I later used um, for my knitwear. Corsa people used to dress in beadwork, which were extravagant. They loved color. And I did a little bit of research while doing my project at the university, 
and because I had to find inspiration for my knitwear because um, I had to get something which was quite unique and actually use it and fuse it in within the knitwear and then propose it to the university and, and hear what they had to say. Um, Kosa people have been practicing rituals and customs for centuries, but none of those customs are actually written down. Uh, so we can actually go back and say that, okay, um, when we have to do that type of ritual, we're going to take the in ingredients and, and do step one and step two. Uh, we have to rely on the elders' knowledge. Um, one of the rituals which is compulsory in the closer heritage is, is manhood initiation. Um, traditionally, we go for initiation between, the, between age 18 and 25. Um, the government um, changed it to 18 because um, there is a big issue, um, more especially in the rural areas where young boys, who well, as young as 14, decide to go for manhood initiation, and some of them die, uh, but uh, the, um, the chiefs of the villages are trying to resolve that issue. I hope they do, uh, because uh, we have a, a big crisis. Kosa initiates, before they go to the circumcision school, uh, they have to give away all the, the, the clothing as a sign of the end of their uh, boyhood. Um, they have to go through the transition, which um, is about uh, a month now. It used to be six months uh, back in the days. Um, we sit in the initiation school and get visits from the elders who teach us manhood protocol, who actually tell us that where we come from, who were the kings um, in, in, within, our, within our clan, and they, 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 they give us advice once we get married, this is how uh, customs and rituals to, should be done. And after the process, when we return home, um, the whole community gathers up and uh, we get gifts from the community and uh, they celebrate for a day and uh, some bring a lot of beer, homemade beer, and uh, some gift um, brandy. It's an awesome experience uh, which I get got to experience a few times. I, I, I don't feel that comfortable in a celebration because uh, things get tangled up. This is how Corsa initiates are currently dressing after they return from the initiation school. Um, for me, the dress style sort of looks like very um, English. Um, for me, I didn't actually feel comfortable in those clothes. I felt that something needed to be done as a person who has experience in knitwear design and knitting, I sort of felt that there could be something that I could change a bit and then uh, propose it to the closer initiates and, and, and perhaps uh, hear what they have to say. After the closer initiates um, dress up in the, in the jackets and the hunter caps, they take off the jacket uh, uh, maybe three months after the, 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 they, they wear the attire and wear knitwear. And uh, actually parents buy them the clothes because uh, they go for, for, for premium quality clothes because they want the clothes to actually at least last until um, the, 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 the boys get married so that there wouldn't be a financial burden. So they seek for some of the best brands which are uh, Pringle of Scotland, uh, Lyle and Scott, which are uh, very dominant in South Africa. Um, and there, is, there isn't a, an alternative uh, brand that uh, initiates can actually choose and say, okay, this ha has some sort of cultural re resemblance. I will buy it because uh, it relates to the aesthetics of the closer. Um, one of our icons, Nelson Mandela, um, was, um, was initiated at uh, age 16. I just read... Um, his book, Long Walk to Freedom, and I quote from his, um, uh, one of his chapters. He said that he felt very happy and fulfilled taking part in his customs and ready to make a transition from boyhood to manhood. Um, I think, I personally think that um, the culture has actually done a part of building his character. Uh, for, for instance, the, 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 the endurance. Endurance is not 
as, as easy as, as it sounds, but once you're in that process, even in the initiation school, when you have to endure for a week, you have to sit without, you have to stay there without water and no medical treatment, uh, it's a hard process, but uh, we apply that in life. When we um, go through hardships, we actually um, uh, recall those moments and, and, and actually uh, it helps us um, go through a lot of things. After, um, uh, during my, my, my research, um, I had to actually make the knitwear myself. And uh, as part of the curriculum of my course, we had to enter an international competition. So I had to identify raw material and make the, 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 the actual garment. And uh, I felt fortunate that I was sitting in the, I felt that I was in the right city because Port Elizabeth, where I come from, it has, has, has the biggest mohair industry in the world, um, and they have uh, the, the, the biggest wool industry in, in, in Africa. So there's a lot of um, wool brokers in the city. And uh, at that time, I was, I was looking for funding to actually fund my project because I couldn't get any manufacturers to give them my design and get them to, to manufacture my design. So I had to... Uh, knit the, 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 the garments myself and get a, a dyer to actually dye the colors that I chose for my knitwear. And uh, I fortunately got a sponsor, a, a bursary from Mohair South Africa and Cape Wood South Africa and bought a knitting machine. And uh, I had to learn how to do jacket patterns. And fortunately, I was able to do it uh, for the competition. Uh, the Society of Dyers and Colorists competition that I entered, um, the, 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 the brief was to, was to design um, something that had emphasis on color, uh, to use color in a creative and imaginative way, and uh, to produce a truly distinctive pieces of textile or fashion, and explore enormous opportunities of color to communicate difference and individuality, incorporate an element of social responsibility into approach of design and final design application. I had a deep thought about this um, um, a brief because it sort of related to my school project and uh, it, it sort of helped me um, walk my journey because I wanted to meet most of those criteria so that I, 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 I hit the, 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 the nail on the head. During the, the 2010 Soccer World Cup, um, fortunately, um, there was a lot of buzz, a lot of energy going on, and there were a lot of exhibitions in South Africa. And uh, one of the museums in, in Port Elizabeth had, had an exhibition of traditional closer beadwork. And one of my lecturers suggested that I go there uh, to see the beadwork and perhaps I might find inspiration from there. So I decided to go there with a photographer and I went to the back offices and found astonishing traditional cross-up beadwork with extravagant patterns. Some of them were had like, they were made um, with leather and uh, most of the pieces were actually collected from um, community members by anthropologists. Uh, some of the beadwork uh, actually dated from the 1800s. I was, uh, I was overwhelmed when I saw these pieces because I've never seen these kind of pieces in my life. And uh, uh, unfortunately, the, the, this type of content, we actually, we don't have, we didn't have it when I was in high school as part of the curriculum. So it was sort of something new to me that I, I went out more and researched and found out that within the Kosa culture, each clan had a, a, a color scheme and, 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 and patent designs which were, uh, they, they, they preferred and, and styles that they actually developed. It sort of gave me um, design possibilities to actually create as much style that I can. Some, some of the skirts that the women wore in the olden days were actually elaborately decorated and, and now you don't get this kind of uh, decoration techniques uh, because they, 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 they take too long to make. And I found these patterns, mo motifs fascinating and uh, I took pictures and let me note that, that the beadwork actually, I thought it was the right subject matter for me because uh, knitwear, we, 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 we work with a lot of pixels. And what if, when I zoom into the beadwork, you know, I get 
the same kind of effect, which sort of, when I translate it into network design, it, it sort of has this, the same kind of essence. So I could capture the designs, and I had to actually uh, pick up some of the colors and actually interpret, that, interpret them so that they would look like traditional coarser colors. And these are the few motifs that I actually developed from the beadwork. So I got the motifs. Now it was time to actually develop the motifs to network designs, uh, typical motifs like the, the chevron, which is quite common, and the X, and uh, the three other ones were actually um, original ones that I actually developed, but I had to play around them to make unique designs and apply some colors as well. This, e this was the first design that I made. And for instance, if you look at the inspiration there, like, like the texture of the beadwork, I've sort of applied it in, the, in one of the panels that, that actually goes down there as the blue. And uh, I looked on the images, anthropology images, to sort of replicate that kind of look. So that when a person looks at it, you know, uh, they, they, they actually get that kind of feel that this is extravagant, this is cultural, but yet modern. I can relate to it. It looks beautiful. And this is the second design that I made. Sort of, I sort of use the same application on every design, and uh, some of the motifs recur in, in different designs. Uh, for instance, uh, this particular design, um, I used a uh, uh, texture of, from traditional crosser dish called umgusho, which is very common um, food that people uh, in the crosser uh, territory eat. And the uh, X design, I took some motifs from the sticks that uh, people use as functional objects. And the sleevesless uh, v-neck um, was sort of like from the design on the left of the beadwork, I interpreted into the beadwork. And uh, this was the first. <laughs> this, was the f this was the initial collection that I developed uh, from the concept that I, I made and I had to knit them myself. So they weren't technically the way that I wanted them to be, but the design at least came out the way that I wanted. And um, we had to actually pose as crosser initiates. Uh, these are not crosser initiates. Uh, we couldn't find men who were willing enough because um, once you go through that stage, you don't want to go back. You know, People um, look at it as taboo. So I had to pay my friends to come and pose for me. <laughs> That's me on the left on the on the left hand side. And so I entered the, the SDC competition and won the nationals and went to the international leg in London uh, in 2010 and I won that as well, which was a good stepping stone for me to actually expose my design to other markets as well, uh, to actually see what the response would be. After the whole experience, I had to graduate and leave varsity, and so I had to find a job. Uh, it was quite a stressful process because there aren't a lot of textile jobs in South Africa. The industry um, is deteriorating uh, at a fast rate and it's it depressing a lot of designers. So I thought, okay, let me be my mother and try to be an entrepreneur. It's either I take a job or be an entrepreneur and take the risk. So I approached the university and said to them, um, could you please, like, can I hire a space and make a studio and uh, try to actually establish a career? I know this have, has never been done before, uh, but I want to try it out, and they were convinced. And fortunately, during that time, I got invited to speak at the Design Indaba in 2011. Uh, they were overwhelmed about that because uh, they never had a student who was invited to, to speak there. Uh, so I was lucky enough. And they gave me a studio. I, uh, they, they, they even gave me seed capital so I could hire a few ladies from, 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 from my local community and, and actually taught them how to knit. Uh, it was a frustrating process because uh, <laughs> knitting is quite a difficult um, 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 skill. I've been, I've been knitting for about uh, 10 years and uh, I had experience, but uh, with the ladies, they, 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 they Knitting, it takes quite long. You can make um, a jersey, can, can take maybe about uh, 2,000 rows. 
And by the time you get half year, you make a thousand rolls, and then the, one of the ladies makes a mistake, and then the piece falls down. She has to start all over again. And I decided, perhaps it's in the beginning, I need to outsource my production. I was based in Port Elizabeth, and Port Elizabeth doesn't have a design infrastructure. There isn't a good spirit for design. Uh, uh, most of the people there are, are, are consumer-minded. Um, so I had to make a decision to actually move to Cape Town, where there's a lot of factories to outsource from, and uh, a lot of dye houses that could dye the yarn that I wanted. So I had to think about establishing a brand and, and, and sort of think about what I do carefully, because I had no brand to look up to in South Africa, because most of the designers actually um, uh, make uh, very cosmopolitan clothes and uh, they don't focus on culture because um, locals see it as uh, very old fashioned uh, to, to, to take inspiration from culture and, 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 and reinterpret it into modern clothes. So for me it was sort of like taking a risk because um, if I had to present my garments to, 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 to the cosmopolitan South African market, they would be like, uh, but no, we don't, we don't dress this. We, 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 we wear Paul Smith, we wear, we wear, we wear Gucci. <laughs> and so I decided to call my brand Makrosa Palatuma because I felt that most of the inspiration for my work comes from the Krosa. And the ladies that actually made the, the, knit, the, the, the beadwork, I, I, I saw them as artisans. Beadwork, making beadwork is difficult. Uh, one would actually make uh, some pieces take about a thousand beads. And by the time you're halfway, you have to unravel again because you made a mistake somewhere, you know. So I felt that I need to honor them and establish a heritage brand which the future generation can perhaps go back to and say, actually, we had quite an astonishing culture, and this is something that comes from here at home, and sh we should embrace it. And in 2012, um, I decided to launch my first collection, so I had to extend the, the, the current five pieces that I had and uh, uh, make five more pieces. And fortunately, I got invited to showcase my first collection at an emerging designer show in London. And it felt sort of awkward for me because I've never, I never did a show in South Africa before. And uh, so I took the opportunity and went there and uh, showcased my first collection. And I had to learn about the industry as well because I, I, was, I, I, I never worked for a company before and I didn't have experience in the commercial knitwear in the design industry. And so I got my first order from my customer in Cape Town um, because when I did the presentation at the design in Daba, I got a lot of people that wanted to buy. So I thought, great. I delivered my first order and I uh, thought that, okay, it would be a good start to start home uh, before looking abroad. And 2013, I had to come up with a new collection, which, which was sort of different to what I initially did. A lot of people asked me, okay, you've established something now. Uh, what's the next step? Are you going to go to Kenya and look at the Messiah for inspiration? I said, no, I'm going to still look at what I do and perhaps uh, come up with something different and, and create a new spirit or whatever. In 2013, I was in a different mindset, and at uh, that time, I, um, I was thinking about my late mother and, 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 and how actually it, my work has progressed from where we began, and actually thought, actually, my heritage is, uh, is my inheritance. That, that, that statement came up when I was working, and uh, a friend of mine said that as well, you know, so I thought this is the right theme for the collection. And because I felt that my heritage was the best inheritance that I got from my mother, more than anything that she left behind. So this is the collection that I did, and um, this was about 10 years after she passed away, and um, my mother loved, she loved Paris, she loved, she loved the French. Uh, she used to buy a lot of books and, and uh, call West Africans to, 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 to come and teach us French, but we, we, couldn't, we, 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 we couldn't take it. And uh, this is some of the pieces that I showed. And currently, I did a collection, um, launched a collection for this year called We Lembo, where, where I sort of um, try to imagine how the closer people actually look before they were colonized. 
<laughs> I'm so sorry, Little, because it's so enjoyable. And I'm, but because of the time. So could... Now, will you... Can you speak... Let's get a little bit. And okay. also, I know you want to show a film, so yeah. we won't do any questions. But if okay. you just quickly take through All and right. show the film, that would be okay. great. Thank you. And so I had to launch a women's collection because the women love my knitwear as well. <laughs> <laughs> and I made some socks as well. <laughs> made cushions. I collaborated with a company that makes mohair rugs uh, based in Port Elizabeth. They manufacture in South Africa. Uh, very beautiful. And um, I had a... There's a, there's a young guy that I mentored at Varsity uh, who liked what I did. So I made a design, and actually he, he did a beadwork design on an iPhone cover. And I currently did a collaboration with a company that makes ceramic um, tile panels. Um, what design did, um, for me, I think it sort of refreshed the, 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 the culture and offered a modern appeal that draws the past and restored cultural pride as well, and, and um, I sort of established a niche market that adds value to the supply chain of the mohair and, and wool industry in Port Elizabeth. And uh, these are some of the response that I get from people who actually see my neat way in South Africa. On the bottom left there is Brahu Masekele, a very awesome jazz player. And my vision is to actually achieve commercial success that would grow local textile and innovate more products, preserve and share, look stories about Tosa heritage and revitalize cultural pride. And I will show a short film. And also, where can we buy you? Um, you can go to my website, markhorsa.co.za and uh, look at the collection from there, but I do have a small, pe small pieces with me um, here. <laughs> and thank you very much. <laughs> the video is playing, the video is playing, I don't know. Chonga e mifini am ubona ndoni tibona ndota ushobo ndota ikufaneleke ikangeleke ngayo wizi teteza kwantu ukuba ndota unyanzeleke ile uye suthwini ndota leyo ke kunyanzeleke ile yaluke Zaguya, Imatunzin, Ufa Abanga Pumele Lang, Bangin, Gokolo, Lizinia. A Gokoko Pila, the Pine was a sailor in Hongo. Gopela went back to end Nayo, Nalingo Moyam. Tini Dafundi Swaguba A Kondu Unugutale Lubutota Dafunda Oguba Kufuneka Uzi Tetele Ka Windota 
Tafunda ngembeko. Usiku sako. Na kwa banyi ya bandu. Tafunda ukupagamisa. Ukandu faluamu. Usatu luamu. Ibengi lona lini kagiso kumu. Kwa kunye na banyi ya bandu. Ngoba umtu. Umtu kabandu. Takelelua ukuba. Mantibeli lizwi. Kwa bo banga kwazi uzi tetela. Dafunda ubali kaka. Tibeno kiniseka kuzo zonke izi pumo ezenzi kayo. Tikiniseke kwizwi endi litetayo. Dikaise gembilini ununuto Kwa ba pezu nukuwe. Iba, sisi tunywa, sisi tete. Ningubeko yako. Ndi indota, yikamva, ilipambi kwetu. Kwa ye, esi, Sisi nyebo esi tetangam. Tingula tuma wakang kokor. Unyana wamambon. O tas. O ndae. O stelegas. O ngungush. O slamba umubend. This is my heritage. This is my inheritance.